From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. essentially something at its most simplistic, a concept, a thought, uh, an idea, an, a vibe, an energy, something that you can communicate and people immediately click and connect with what that is, whether it's just a, whether it's associating it with a particular brand or a particular ideology or just like we've talked about, a format that you can then transpose other ideas onto. I mean, because a lot of times these meme image formats that we're talking about are pulled from stuff from pop culture, whether it's an anime or something or a screenshot from some movie or a character, you don't think about that character anymore. It becomes wholly its own thing that is then used to disseminate the idea that you are then kind of superimposing atop it. Uh, a meme is an element of culture or system of behavior that is passed from one mind to another via uh, very blunt instrument communicative kind of techniques, not genetic as, as we would typically think of, you know, complex systems of repeating um, and self-replicating stuff like, like viruses or genes. Um, most particularly, this is through imitation, which is the sincerest form of flattery, uh, but it can also be weaponized, can't it? Yeah, yeah. The the way I like to phrase it is a meme is a unit of information. And non-genetic transmission is a huge part of this. Memes are transmissible. They are contagious. Uh, we talked about this in our earlier Strange News and Listener Mail segments. And we had this, one of those conversations that never really ends, the debate over whether or not this contagious factor, this ability to transmit from one mind to the next, whether or not this means an idea can be considered alive. It's similar to the debate about viruses. I mean, not for nothing do people call a popular meme viral, right? Ideas move like viruses. They mutate like viruses from one iteration to the next, and they can directly affect the actions of of other more orthodox living things, cough, cough, people, hearts and minds. Uh, it's, it's weird because this, this term, like this is an ancient idea, right? It probably is older than the oldest written language, but the term itself didn't come into being until 1976 when Richard Dawkins wrote a book called The Selfish Gene. And he wasn't originally talking about the internet. He was just trying to explain this process of replication, mutation, and evolution that occurs with ideas. You know, slang could also be an example of a meme, right? Uh, these days, most of the time, when you hear discussions outside academia about memes, we're talking about internet memes, and they really started to come into their heyday in the 1990s, <laughs> thanks to emoticons. I love giving shout outs. You guys know this. Shout out to Scott E. Fallman, the introducer, the popularizer, dare we say the creator of the sideways smiley face made with punctuation, a.k.a. the... Er yes, 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 clap for you, sir. A.k.a. <laughs> AKA the way to put a little, you know, put a little snaz on your text message, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's a big difference between, hey, it was good to see you, period, and, hey, it was good to see you, you know, colon, parentheses. Mm. Oh, that's a little uh, mm. a little saucy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's funny because this is like that meme, that idea, that emoticon specifically gave birth later to emoji. Uh, and it also now is considered kind of a relic. It's kind of old school. If honestly, you know, and I think the world of you guys, you know that. But if one of you ever sent me a text with like the punctuation smiley face, I would be a little worried. I would think really? it was like, yeah, I would, I would feel like you might be in an emotionally vulnerable place because you guys are masters at, at emoji and memes. So if it's, if it's no. the, Okay, Did you well, know I've done that to you before? Well, I have you, done that to you, but on my phone, it translates it into an emoji. 
It does do that. <laughs> I usually use that. I mean, honestly, I use that to just defray any potential like misinterpretation, like to let you know that I'm being lighthearted in some way, or I'm just like, this is not serious. Um, the thing that we've talked about this, but the opposite effect uh, of that to me is the period. The period mm-hmm. to me is the most aggressive punctuation mark in all of textum. I know, man. We've talked about how we, how uh, our understanding of each other's perspectives affects the way that we communicate via text online because so much nuance can get missed. As a matter of fact, about 60% of the communication that occurs whenever people are talking in person is nonverbal. It's body language. It's, uh, it's tone. You know, it's things like that. The, the words are sort of a... Um, a side effect or a clarifying factor. When when we look at this, if we look at internet memes, we know that the like the proper dressed up with a tie on concept of an internet meme was first proposed by a guy named Mike Godwin in an article for Wired way back in June of 1993, who was riding the zeitgeist, finger on the pulse indeed. And as the internet became increasingly sophisticated, as its reach became ever broader, as its depth became ever deeper, internet memes evolved in step. That's why we talk about things like dank memes, god tier memes, stuff like that. Like you, you see this all the time uh, for digital natives, as corporate America would call them, where they're like, this meme is awesome. And to explain it to you, you have to understand like five years of the memes leading up to this. Here's why this is funny. And Dawkins was conscious of this. He later went on to describe internet memes in particular as being altered by human creativity. He called it, quote, a hijacking of an original idea. And hijacking is a very important word here. Memes like algorithms can subtly alter the viewer's perception over time. Like, have you ever have you ever been caught flat-footed by a meme you're like haha this is cool what, what's going on here and then you look at the source and you're like oh that's that's from a russian troll mm-hmm. or oh that was some alt-right propaganda but gosh that was got all the lulls out of that one uh, that's the problem with memes is they can be insidious in that way because they essentially are masquerading as junk food you know or or as just some little nugget to kind of give you some lulls uh but not something to be taken seriously uh and that is how they are used as a tool or weaponized is this whole idea where it's like oh you never see it coming because it's inherently sort of not to be taken seriously well yeah i, I think the 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 biggest factor with a meme is that it's easily shareable. It is the most shareable thing that you can possibly have for social media, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's basically an image that has text embedded into it, and you just post that anywhere, and it can spread like wildfire. Yeah, and also it's a very low investment of attention. It asks very little from the audience. You don't have to read a scientific journal. You just have to, like, you don't even laugh. You just kind of exhale slightly louder than normal through your nose. And you go, ha ha, yeah, Pepe, at it again. You could also argue it's a very low bar for the interpretation of intention, right? So, like, if someone posts a meme, oh, no biggie, it was, I thought it was funny. And, like, it's going to be hard to, I mean, obviously this has changed over time, but it's a little harder to peg somebody as, quote-unquote, spreading propaganda just because they posted some harmless meme, as opposed to, like, say, posting a screenshot from a chapter of Mein Kampf. Right. I just thought it was funny, bro. I mean, look at that. That that dog. That is... frog's on a unicycle, man. <laughs> look at it. That look boy. At oh, we're going to talk about that boy in a second. Yeah. You're, you guys are nailing it. Like, in, in short, memes are more than just Internet shitposts. They can be, at least in the right hands. Memes can use written language, but they don't have to do so. If we were to take. And I'm still working on optimism with mixed results. But if we were to take an optimistic stance, we we could say memes can bring people together. They can bridge the gap between linguistic barriers, demographic barriers, cultural barriers. You know, who doesn't like to laugh? But let's be honest. Humans have a well-known track record. Human civilization has a bit of a reputation. The rap sheet for the species is long and it's riddled with disappointing, alarming precedents. Humans take new technology and almost instantly ask, so how can we make this a weapon 
How can we use this to get an advantage over those we see as not in our group, our community, or our tribe? Memes are no exception to this rule.